The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. He calls everyone and everything into his service. He calls the just and the sinners alike. He calls children to be brought to him, and then he gives them to speak and to sing his praise. He calls fools to come and to learn from him wisdom. And today, we heard him call a donkey into his service to carry him into the holy city. He even takes a tree of the cross, carries it to Golgotha, and with it accomplishes the salvation of mankind. If you want to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem with Christ, you have to come in with his confession and under his service. Perhaps you cannot walk beside Jesus. Maybe you can't put your garments under him or praise him with joyful songs like the children or cast your garments and palms before him on the road. But you can be at least his donkey and serve him in faithful confession and love for your neighbor. This is his call when he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And when he says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Or the Apostle Paul, for you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And St. Peter, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. That is, God puts you into vocations, callings. And in these, well, broad, three broad categories are hierarchies. The government or state, the home and economic interactions, and then also the congregation and, of course, faith. In the shorthand, these three estates or hierarchies are the state, the family, and the church. And God puts us there because these are his institutions. No one operates exclusively in one, but simultaneously lives under all three. For example, I am a citizen, a pastor, a husband, and a father. For each of you, your interactions, maybe, or callings are different. And God tells us how to act ethically within these vocations, these callings. These are outlined for us in our small catechism in the table of duties, that last section. These table of duties is comprehensive, I think, of vocation and worth your study to clarify who God has given you to be and what he would have you do within that. Today, though, we learn that Jesus gives us to bear our crosses in these callings. Again, with scriptural direction for your interactions in all three estates. Bearing this cross is to be called in love for your neighbor by Christ, wherever he puts you, whether the greatest or the least, even if God gives you to be a poor donkey. And it's actually a kind of vocational hazard to be called into um, office of the church, for example, because one can become prideful or boastful in that, or to be called to high civil office. Again, one might lose it, their humility and serve according to the ego or for earthly gain. I don't think any of us have been put into high civil office, at least not that I'm aware of, to preside over others with words and works. There's only one in this congregation given the pastoral office to preach and teach God's word. There are others, though, in the church who have been given helping offices like teachers, deaconesses, other kinds of overseers and musicians. Most many of you have been called to spend hours in prayer for others and in meditation on God's word. Some Christians, it seems, are given to sacrifice time and goods for the need, needs of the neighbor, be they the poor, the weak, the infirmed, or the aged. 
Nevertheless, we all stand as Christ's donkey and serve him by bearing him, carrying him in our body and soul. Again, as St. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Here, that's Romans 12. And the entirety of Romans 12 is actually another great place to go and learn, like the table of duties, a vocation with clarity, teaching how God would have you bear your cross wherever he has called you. Even if you've not been given to, to govern or to teach or to instruct or to preach or to distribute alms or to praise God with joyful song, at least you can be Christ's donkey, carrying him for his glory, receiving patience, his yoke with patience and his cross, and where, whatever he sends you and wherever he sends you, bearing it with thanksgiving. In ancient of days, the Jews and the pagans used to mock us Christians in the early church. They actually called us donkeys. And that's because they treated also Christians no better than a beast of burden. The church father, Tertullian, around 200 AD, records how they even blasphemed Jesus in the same way. When they would draw Christ on a cross, they would picture him with donkey ears, mocking our God in Christ as a beast and not a true God. But maybe there's some truth to it, and we can embrace our identity as donkeys. While to be Jesus' donkey is difficult, I would suggest to you it's also secure and comforting. Think of the donkey today in our text. He serves Christ more faithfully and nobly surrenders his body to Christ's service, to bear Jesus. He doesn't look to himself and to his needs and wants, but to his master. The donkey that bears Christ walks safely under Christ without fear and anxiety. It's hard to fall victim to pride or failure or error when you have Christ riding you, because Christ leads and guides him by the bridle so that he does not go astray. He stays on the way. Christ curbs him so that he does not run off into conceit and presumption. And even if he falls, Christ then lifts him back up. Christ corrects him with the rod if he is reluctant, idle, or lazy. And through it all, he remains ever near Christ. Whatever honor is given to Christ, Hosanna to the son of David, is enjoyed by the donkey who bears him. Because whatever good is done to Christ, the donkey also gets to enjoy whether it's the garments, the palm branches, the singing, or the praises. It's true that some were given to untie the donkey and lead him to Christ. Others were given to dress up the donkey with their garments, put Christ on it. Some were given to strew their garments on the road and distribute their goods to be enjoyed by the donkey. Other onlookers sing in praise of Christ, and the donkey, the poor donkey, hears the, these for him too, drawing comfort and patience from them. And even the least of Christ's brethren, even a donkey, can receive everything given to Christ. Matthew 25. Christ may be riding you like a donkey today, it seems, with tribulation, adversity, persecution, sorrow, poverty, or sickness. Or maybe he's given you to be one of the care of those who are to care for the poor and afflicted persecuted, sick, donkey Christian. But whatever is done for the donkey is done for Christ himself, who sits on him. And Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And it's made even lighter as the poor donkey learns that Christ will not leave him, but will govern him, feed him, defend him, and keep him safe. Indeed, since Christ is riding the donkey, he will lead him at last into the heavenly Jerusalem, even everlasting Jerusalem. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Amen.